Do you think it's possible to be an atheist and a Christian? Oh yeah, I, I kind of think I am one because I think that uh, it's a category confusion to think of God as an external entity like a, a, the moon orbiting the earth. The God, there's no God out there in that sense. Uh, in Psalm 22 it says that God is enthroned upon the praises of his people. Well, I don't know what was in the mind of the, the writer, but I love that phrase because yeah, that, that is where God is. God is a function of worship and a religious experience. If you can show, as you probably can, that all religious religious experience uh, comes out of the temporal parietal lobe of the brain, that's fine with me. I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm simply saying there is such a thing as wholesome religious experience uh, and uh, that, that just does not beg historical or scientific questions. So I've asked every atheist I've interviewed this, uh, why do you hate Jesus? I don't at all. I, in fact, I fear atheists have a kind of Dracula response, that they have a kind of superstitious fear of Jesus. Even Unitarians, I, I once uh, guest preached in a Unitarian church years ago and the Christ was in the title. They edited it on me and changed it to Jesus and I'm sure they would rather have gotten rid of that too. That strikes me as, as uh, neurotic and paranoid. What is the problem with Jesus? We're not talking about Hitler. You know, what, what is the problem with the Bible? There's a lot of barbaric stuff as you would expect in an ancient mythical uh, book, but uh, you know, it's not Mein Kampf. It's not the satanic Bible. It, the, there's uh, just a kind of superstitious phobia that, because a lot of atheists have, have emerged from abusive religious experiences and I'm glad they got out of it, but they, they now have a kind of overreaction, it seems to me. Like somebody who was in a, an abusive relationship and will no longer risk having relationships or commitments anymore, you, you're just uh, cutting off your nose to spite your face. If you don't have faith in supernatural events and you don't believe, I assume, in an afterlife and uh, a heaven and a hell and all that, what, what is religion for? Uh, it's to enrich uh, this life uh, along the lines Aristotle said drama is. In fact, all drama grows out of religion. It, it's a, a, a laboratory in which you create catharsis, the cleansing of the soul of pity and terror by means of pity and terror, I think was actually his definition. Well, not necessarily terror, but there's a sense of awe and uh, in the spectacle of the myths that are acted out and joined in by way of rituals and sacraments. It is essentially dramatic and aesthetic in nature, uh, and that's, but, but that's not to downplay it. As Tillich said, one shouldn't say, oh, it's merely a symbol. Oh, no, no, what do you think a symbol is? Say no less than a symbol. Uh, if Jesus did actually rise from the dead and you had it on videotape, what would be the spiritual meaning of that? If that's where it ended, why would that be any different than getting footage of a UFO or the abominable snowman? Uh, it has to communicate something spiritually because of a, of a symbolic dimension. And if it does that, if it functions as a symbol, it doesn't really matter how it started as a factual report or a myth. Uh, and uh, it's certainly clear that the people, the, the millions of people that claim to have a personal relationship with Christ, which is a kind of a devotional idiom I don't really uh, resonate with, but uh, th those people are, are relating to a Jesus that has nothing to do with any historical Jesus. I mean, the, 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 even if there was a Jesus on earth so many years ago, whatever they're in touch with is not he. I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're creating a kind of an imaginary playmate, uh, to put it bluntly. I mean, they're, they're uh, sort of fantasizing a Jesus uh, who, who by nature can, uh, I mean, if they imagine Jesus whispers something to them, it's not an Aramaic. I mean, it's, uh, in fact, from the standpoint of, uh, of believing in a historical Jesus, the, the personal savior thing undermines it even more than what I'm saying. Because uh, the, the real Jesus, if there was one, utterly fades into insignificance uh, in favor of this imaginary voice I hear telling me stuff. Uh, and my, my oversensitive conscience reflects reflecting whatever they've told me in church, Jesus says that to me. Th th I mean, this really makes the gospel Jesus obsolete. With my view, at least uh, you're leaving untouched the stories and saying there is great stuff here I can learn from and that I even have 
become responsible to. But, but with the other thing, you know, which Jesus do you want? The, the uh, Jesus that walks with you and talks with you and poses with little kids with their paper airplanes and vacation Bible school posters, some utterly fantastic Jesus that people have invented? Or, I mean, I've at least got the gospel character. Uh, I'm not sure they do.